Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Mallory and today I will be walking you through a technical guide on various liabilities. You may have noticed the terms provision and contingent liability specifically in your IFRS review. Many candidates find it challenging to understand the relationship between these two and how they can effectively address these issues during a case scenario. This video will help provide you with more depth on these topics and ensure you are addressing the right criteria. Before we differentiate between provisions and contingent liabilities, let's review the definition of a liability under IFRS. Under IAS 37, liabilities are defined as present obligations to a company that arises from past events where the settlement is expected to result in an outflow of company resources, an example of that being cash. Let's look at an example of a liability. Let's say company ABC got a loan of $50,000 from the bank that's due in January. This is a present obligation because the company has agreed to pay it back, and this has arose from past events when the company signed the contract to accept the loan. When the company pays back the loan, there will be an outflow of resources in the form of the $50,000. Therefore, the definition of this liability is met. Now let's discuss what makes a provision different from an ordinary liability. A provision is a liability that is uncertain in timing or amount. In our earlier example, company ABC had to pay back a $50,000 loan in January. This was a liability, not a provision, because both the timing and the amount were certain. Now let's say company ABC sells its products with warranty. The amount of warranty claims and when they will be claimed are uncertain. Thus, it is a provision. And to go over the provision criteria, you must meet the three conditions. It must be a present obligation for the outflow of cash as a result of a past event. It must be probable that resources will be needed to settle the obligation. And the amount can be reliably measured. An obligation exists when the company has no alternative to settling it other than being enforced by law. Probable in the case of a provision means more likely than not, and this means approximately 50% or higher probability. A provision is measured using the best estimate. In the case where there is a large possibility of outcomes, it's estimated using the expected value method. When there is a range of possible outcomes and each point is just as likely as the other, the midpoint of the range will be used. Under IFRS, a provision is required to be reviewed at the end of every reporting period. Some examples of provisions include warranty obligations, refund policies, onerous contracts, construction obligations to clean up land, for example, and restructuring. These examples create an unavoidable outflow of resources and often require historical knowledge to record the estimated amount. For example, like using a warranty claim percentage from past years. Now let's test your knowledge on provisions. For example, company ABC sells dishwashers, each included with a legal warranty of two years. Throughout these two years, company ABC is required to remove all defects that existed at the time of the sale. It's given that this is not a separate performance obligation. Based on historical evidence, the company estimates approximately 30,000 cost of repairs in the first year and 10,000 in the second year. Let's check if the three provision criteria are met. The present obligation for outflow of cash as a result of a past event is met as a sale has occurred in the past and the company is obligated to fulfill the warranty. Whether it's probable that it'll have to settle the provision is also met this is unavoidable because the warranty agreement is in place. And if the amount can be reliably measured, this is also met as the company has historical knowledge that it needs to settle 30,000 in the first year and 10,000 in the second year. Because company ABC has an unavoidable obligation of an uncertain amount, this is a provision. Note that this is also a liability because remember provision is a type of liability. Lastly, let's review how this differs from a contingent liability. Provision is of uncertain timing or amount, but it will happen, it's unavoidable, while contingent liabilities may or may not happen and it could be very well avoidable. The recognition criteria for contingent liabilities are as follows. It needs to be a possible obligation that arises from past events, existence will be confirmed by occurrence or non-occurrence of uncertain events, 
not wholly in the control of the entity. Then similar to a liability, you should discuss the probability and measurability. While provisions are recorded in the financial statements, contingent liabilities are not recorded but instead disclosed. If the probability of the outflow is remote, the contingent liability doesn't need to be disclosed. Let's say there is a pending investigation against company ABC for possible health concerns at one of its facilities. The legal team at company ABC believes that the probability of being found in violation is likely low as the complaint is said to have come from a disgruntled former employee. No estimate of the amount is provided. First, it would be best to check if the three provision criteria are met. So whether the present obligation for outflow as a result of past events is met, in this case it is not, it's a possible obligation but not yet currently obligating the company. Whether it's probable that it'll settle the provision, that is also not met as the legal team believe that this is a low chance and the legal team is considered to be a reliable source. Whether the amount can be reliably measured is also not met as the amount is unknown at this time. So because the outflow of resources is not probable and no estimate is given, this is in fact not a provision. So now, let's next go on to check if it meets the criteria of a contingent liability. In terms of possible obligation that arises from past events, this is in fact met as it is a possible obligation as a result of a past health concern. Existence will be confirmed by occurrence or non-occurrence of uncertain future events. This is in fact met as the payout for the lawsuit may or may not happen. And in this case, the outflow of resources is not probable and is not measurable. Therefore, this contingent liability should be disclosed. Now let's test your knowledge on the overall concept of liabilities. For example, Company ABC has been engaged in a lawsuit where a customer has fallen on company property in January. As of April, it is unclear whether the company will be required to pay settlement or not. So at this point, it represents a contingent liability because it could be avoidable. However, as of June, Company ABC has been found guilty of the lawsuit against them, but it has not yet been determined if they will have to pay $50,000 or $150,000 and when. This will be determined at the next court date in July. So at this point, it represents a provision because it is in fact unavoidable as the company will be required to pay some amount. If the amount and timing were both known at this point, then it would be classified as an ordinary liability. Since we've reviewed the standard in IFRS detail, let's review the ASPE equivalent standard. Under ASPE, the following differences exist. The term contingent liability is used opposed to the term provision. A contingent liability is also recognized when the probability of an outflow is likely instead of probable. Instead of taking the best estimate or range for measurement, ASPE uses the minimum amount. There is also no requirement to review contingent liabilities at the end of each reporting period, but instead when conditions have in fact changed. There is also no concept of constructive obligations and onerous contracts in ASPE. And it's important to know these differences when assessing an AO under a specific framework so you can get the applicable marks. Overall, the key difference to keep in mind when reviewing an AO is to remember that provisions are unavoidable and will happen, but the timing and amounts are uncertain, whereas a contingent liability may or may not happen. Be sure to integrate case facts when assessing these criteria to achieve depth itself. So now I hope you're ready to practice liability financial reporting assessment opportunities. Thank you.